I started this video silently because I wasn't sure if this was even going to work, but it's looking like it's about to work. Bullfrog. I believe I will be able to make this bullfrog lure with a pretty interesting mechanism, spring-loaded mechanism on the jaw. So when you retrieve it, the jaw is going to catch water, pull against the spring, come down, and crank, and crank, and crank, so possibly dive. But retrieving it slower, the jaw is going to stay closed and it might walk on the surface. It's going to have two legs, two jointed legs off the back. I'm shooting for a lot with this bait, but I believe, I believe we'll be able to make it work. Somewhere around here, I have a 3 8 inch dowel somewhere around here. I probably don't and I need to go to the store. I think this is my only dowel. And that obviously is not 3 8 of an inch, that's a quarter. I'm going to go to the store. I hate starting a project and the first thing I have to do is go to the store. What a bummer, man. There. So that right there is where the jaw of the bullfrog is going to hinge on. I have to cut out this section now and that's what's going to drop down and I'll have it attached to the hinge right here. Pretty straightforward. It's going to work. I just have to hold this straight and make a couple of cuts. So that's the first one. Came out pretty straight. I can do some sanding to, you know, bring it back this way or this way, whichever way it needs to be. But the next cut's kind of weird because this part already I didn't cut straight, so I'm going to have to angle it like that a little bit. Whew. Okay. There's a lot of material I'm going to have to remove to make this work. I'm just just realizing after that cut. But all hope is not lost. Quite a bit of material has been removed, especially right here, because as the joint right there is gonna twist, that material really needs to be out of the way for the lip to lower and actually grab water. So, it's removed. Okay, I drew a couple of marks, I think where I need to cut this hinge, right there and there. The middle piece is going to go inside of this, and then the two outside pieces are going to go on the outside of this. You have to make sure that this is small enough and this is big enough just to fit in. I wouldn't be able to get um, the jaw on this bait without that. You wouldn't be able to slide it through this way. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to like put it in that way. I am just going to put it where it needs to be and drop some super glue on it. Lots of tankering with tiny stuff in this video. Eyeballing, making sure stuff's straight, not making it straight enough and needing to go back and sand and gluing stuff to your fingers and trying to let go of stuff but it's glued to the thing so you just pull it off what you were trying to glue and like right now. Okay, that's one side. That's actually the jaw, one side of the jaw. I almost dropped it. So that's as far as the mouth will close. It needs to be open a little bit so it can catch water and then drop. And that's as far as the mouth will drop. And that's the lip. Not bad. I'll probably have to sand down this edge so it meets flush with the nose still. Weird. <laughs> you might be wondering if this is a strong enough joint and if this lip's going to hold up and all that stuff. Maybe not. I don't know. Look like I care. It's probably going to be pretty strong though. That's just a solid door hinge joint. I'm going to be reinforcing the back here and adding super glue and baking soda and making these connections a bit thicker. That's pretty thin. That that would just snap, I think. But when I'm done, it'll be strong. I really do care, actually. I do want that to be strong. I was kidding. Does it look like I care? It's a rude little frog. I drew some lines right there and they correspond with when you look at this bait from the bird's eye view what you need to carve off to make it you know this isn't a Frankenstein bullfrog you could, I don't want these things sticking out I'm gonna go cut those
I didn't cut all the way to the line. I'm gonna sand the rest of the way and kind of watch it, like sand a little bit, see how it fits, you know? You know. On to drilling some eye sockets. Little bit of carving, a little bit of sanding, actually quite a bit of sanding. This is pretty much going to be the shape of this bullfrog. I got some ridges on the corners here because bullfrogs are that way. Some detail on the back, these two bumps. We're using a 5 8 inch Forstner bit for the lead hole. And right where the lead hole is, is where some hardware needs to be. I decided that if I'm gonna go into any more detail with this bait and add like legs, or, or front legs even too, I need to prove that it works, otherwise this is pointless. So to this specific bait, we're not adding anything else. Though I think Chelsea's gonna tie a feathered treble hook for me off the back here, but this is the only proof of concept that we will be trying to make work with this build. I wanna make everything else as simple as I can to try to get that to work well. No spring either. It's just gonna fall open. I think this is gonna to wanna to float, but when you get some water caught in there and force it down, it'll turn into a lip. So this will be a floating, dispatchable lip, crank down bullfrog. Dispatchable, what a word. It's not even the right word to use right there. Three and quarter, a three and a quarter inch bait. Glad we got that straight. Screw eyes. All of these can be glued in right now. Chip is barking for some reason. I bought some new shop lights, some LEDs, like two weeks ago and they're still not here. I hope Chip's barking at the UPS man. It's gonna look so much better in here with bright, legit, you know, 50,000 lumens of light. I ordered 12 four-footers for a 20 by 20 two-stall garage. There will be light. So there it is with the hardware. I have not been heating up my lead pot. How silly of me. So before that lead gets hot, I'm going to seal all of this with super glue, as you do. There they are. Wow. I have to check every place in the shop before I find what I'm looking for. And it was where I was to begin with. Wow. Every time. That is so annoying. The reason I'm going to be able to use a door hinge joint like this on wood is because I'm sealing it with this super glue. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend having joints like these on wooden baits. Also, what is being joined isn't structural, or it isn't like being dependent upon to catch the fish and pull the fish in. It's just the lip collapsing and then coming back up. It's <coughs> good stuff. That's not a drug reference, by the way. I'm just <coughs> admiring how well this super glue works as a wood sealer. That's what I mean. Gotta be careful on YouTube. And yes, I will be sanding the bejesus out of this again. That just roughed it all up. But I will be ready to make sure this thing floats after I add the weight and the test tank. Here we go, ready to pour. That's it. Let's see how it works. All that we need is this thing to float. And it does. Nice. So here is essentially what this lure is gonna be unpainted. I just uh, stuck a wire in there and bent both ends so the jaw is actually attached. Put both the hooks on here. The finished lure is gonna have a feathered treble on the back though. But there's gonna be this small treble up here so it doesn't get caught in the mouth and then I have a larger treble on the back. I'm gonna go to a pond that's not frozen right now and test this. Moment of truth. Open water, my goodness, 
the ponds are still a little bit frozen around here, even though it's like 40 degrees right now. So all that we have to do is make sure that this works, which it might not. And that would really suck. It's doing more of this than this. It's dolphining. Which is kind of cool. It, it really is doing this. Yeah, it's really doing that. You guys see it? It's even making uh, in the water as it goes a trail that's just like spots. It's a spotty wake because it's it's kicking water up in the back. So this might look really cool with a feathered treble. Wow, that act, that's a unexpectedly good action. Wow. I can even feel it in the rod. Like it's pulling, pulling, pulling. I guess it's kind of more appropriate for a frog too. Wow, this really worked out. I wonder if it does that because the lip moves with the body. Maybe that's just the action that you get from this style of lip that hinges. I hope you guys can see that. That's too cool to not be seen. You'd think by now I have some sort of great way of showing you guys the action of lures in the water, but I don't. Okay, back to the truck. This thing works better than I thought it would have. An unexpected better action came out of this. Amazing. Driving back home, I thought about this a little bit. I think what the lure is doing is you cast it in the water and you start retrieving it and you open the mouth and you pull the head down. But because you pulled it down, you created some resistance at the bottom of the lip and it, and it closed and then it comes up and then you retrieve, open the lip, pull it down. I, is that what's happening? Which is amazing, I've never seen a lure do that. Maybe you have, but. We are painting and I started with white already. I'm gonna go for a bullfrog. What do you know? Pictures. I need pictures. There we go. Green, kind of darkish towards the top. Spotty, orangish yellow belly. I now know what to do. Green, detail moss green. I'm gonna stay away from the mouth for now. I'm gonna leave the mouth alone. I'll paint the mouth at the end. I might want like pink on the inside, maybe white. Hey -o. Ho! Hey! Gray on the top. And just like that, there's yellow and orange on the belly. I have cleaning up to do on the inside of the joint. I kind of forgot to paint it. I need to add some green and yellow to that too. But then once that's done, I can put some spots on it. I painted the mouthpiece too. Kind of the same color scheme and stuff. Anyway, I'll get back to you when I'm painting spots on this thing. And I think what I meant by spots is like big, ugly lines that look like warts also, like that. There we go, that looks like, a, that looks like bullfrog stuff. Looking classy. Do I need to do that on the top? Yes. Yes, I need to do that on the top. Bullfrogs are that ugly on the top, too. Let's keep the warts coming. Once again, this is one of those things that if you try to make it look nice, you're gonna make it look worse. You just need to put the paint on the thing and stop thinking about it. That is seriously all that art is. You gotta pretend you're really good at it and go for it. Make sure you let your art teacher know that as well. So the reason I just happen to be using the exact same eyes that I used in the last video is a good one. Actually, there's two reasons. Number one is these eyes are amazing. Look how amazing that looks. Are you amazed? Do these fit? And number two, Chelsea's gonna tie a feather treble for this bait back here, and the thread's gonna be red, and that's gonna match nicely with that eye, the red pupiled eye. It just matches though. It's like a chartreuse around the red. That really matches well. Time to clear coat. It's gonna dip the whole thing. I'm gonna be letting this drip for a long time after I dip this whole thing. I might do two clear coats on this as well. That joint, 
gonna make things complicated and I need it very thin, the clear coat on this bait. But in order to get it thin, all you have to do is let it drip for a long time. This will be hanging up for a half hour probably, or more. I am scraping off as much clear coat as I can around the joint before I put it in the tank as well. Though there will still be clear coat there, it's just, it's gonna be as thin as possible. I'm gonna let it flash cure, check it out, make sure everything's okay. It's an awkward piece. Perfect. No globs at all. I don't think that's gonna need another clear coat. Clear coat set, the baits assembled, the feather trebles on. Chelsea did a fantastic job, look at that thing. I actually chose the colors for this one. Went for something kind of bullfroggy, of course. But would you just look at that? This thing's adorable. The joint got a little stiff from the clear coat. Like it kind of stays in place, but it's still really loose. I think it's still gonna work, and if not, it's gonna loosen up anyway. I think that's awesome. That looks really good. That looks extremely good. It is time to go fishing. I am forced to fish only rivers. Every pond that I've gone to so far, and I've gone to three, are completely frozen over. Must have got really cold last night. It's pretty cold right now, probably like 35. Probably my best shot anyway, is just getting some kind of very hungry, aggressive something out of a river to bite this crazy thing. So be it, that is what we're doing. That ain't good. All right, it's off. What an unreasonable bait to try to catch a fish with this time of the year. Split down the middle. That's why it broke off. Crazy. Yep. I know. Did I really think I was going to be able to catch anything in winter with a, essentially a topwater bullfrog? No, but the idea for the lure was good and I, I learned something today. We learned that wood is not a strong enough material for a lip like this, but I'll be able to mold, actually make a master and then make a mold and then cast one out of resin and that will be much stronger. That's the solution, that's it. This is an awesome bait. Dare I say a new concept of action has been discovered, unless that's already been discovered before and I didn't know about it. But hey, that's pretty sweet. Bunch of stuff I could try, like a thinner body, like this is obnoxiously fat for a lure, you know? Bigger lip, different angles of the lip, lots of stuff to think about. On to the next bait. What a bummer, man. And number two, I now know what to do. Jaw. That's actually the jaw. It's good stuff. Does it look like I care? Maybe not. I don't know. Dispatchable. That's not a drug reference, by the way. I'm just... 